In this video, we're going to attack a sample and joints in Fusion 360. It seems to me that most videos out there is just using a pin and a round hole. Are you also looking for something a little bit more complex? Hi everybody, my name is Lars Christensen and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. As always, I really appreciate your feedback on this type of videos, so please feel free to put your comments and suggestions down in the comment area. So I have to admit that I have been struggling a little bit wrapping my head around this whole joint within Fusion 360. Mainly because as many of you, I come from another CAD system that does things a little different. So like I said in the intro, I always feel like the examples on YouTube are parts that are so different from what I'm trying to put together. So I watch the video and I say, all right, I got it. And then when I sit down to actually do it on my part, ah, frustration. So my attempt with this video is to make it one step better. You let me know in the comment area. So we're gonna assemble three things in this video. A Kurt Weiss downloaded from their website, a lathe chalk done by Michael Carlson, great work. And then in the end, we will put the vise from the first example onto a table with the clamping and everything. Now, if you scroll down in the description area of this video, you will find the link to all three data sets. So then you don't have to do all the work and hopefully you can find these models useful. Now let's get going with using some joints. So like I said, this model was downloaded right from Kurt's own website. Uh, the only thing I did was I added a little bit of appearance to it just to make it look a little nicer. Now the first thing you always want to do when you bring in models like this is you want to go up and you want to right click and we want to capture the design history. This is the first step. Unless you have to work with this imported model some other way, this is always the thing you want to do. Capture the design history. Now we have the design history bar down here and everything we do from now on will be captured. So I downloaded this model right from Kurt's website and I can't remember if it was an I just or a stab, but it doesn't really matter. See, the thing is that all the components inside of this part is right now just floating around in space. That's very inconvenient, but sadly the way it is, when you export uh, an assembly out of a CAD system, you don't get all the mates or joints with it. So everything is floating around. So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta tie one of these parts down. So what do I mean when I'm talking about the things are floating around in space? Well, if I grab any of these parts, you will see that they are just floating around. Nothing is tied down. So it has the same position as it did when it was exported out at its original CAD system. But right now everything is kind of like floating around and we need to solve that. So the first thing we wanted to do was to capture the history. Now the second thing we want to do is we want to ground or fix one of these parts. It needs to kind of like be locked down in space. And we're looking at a vise like this, probably the base is the one that makes the most sense. So you can do that by going, finding it in the feature tree and you can right click and then you can just hit ground. You will see we get a little thumb tag on here so that means that right now this base is sitting tied down in space. So the first thing is to turn on capturing the design history by right clicking on the top component. The second thing is to ground one of the parts. Now the next thing I want to show you is something that is really important that you know about and that's called rigid group. So rigid group exists down underneath the assemble drop down here, you will see rigid group right here. If I select rigid group and I click on the movable jaw and the movable screws right here and create a rigid group out of these, they are kind of fixed or ground, but they can still move as a group. This is extremely handy when you're working with imported models. Because what that means is that I brought my model in, I, I fixed one of them or I grounded one of them. Now any other component in my assembly that I want to kind of ground 
or, um, or, or tie down, I can use the rigid group for that. I'm gonna use it a couple of times doing this video, so you will definitely get to, to, uh, to meet it. So what I'm going to group next is all the things over here that is tied down to uh, the base itself. So I can go over here and I can say what parts are not going to move in this assembly. And that would be this guard here, the, the fixed jaw, some screws, there's a solid jaw here. There's also this retainer ring over here. Now this uh, model here from uh, from Curd, it's not a perfect model, but it's good enough for, for what we need here. So I'm just gonna select those six items and rigid group those, and now those have tied down. So right now, I only have two movable things on this model. I have that first rigid group I did, and then I have this little handle down here that we really want to, to spin around. And this is the first place I'm going to introduce you to uh, a joint. So after you had turned on Capturing History Tree, after that you have uh, fixed or grounded the main component uh, of your assembly, next use the rigid group to tie everything else down that um, is not really going to move or is going to move in a contact kind of set. So let's talk joints. We will find the joint command up here uh, under the assemble also. So I'm gonna click on that. You will see that we get a pop-up window that talks about capturing the position. So what has happened here is that Fusion noticed that I moved this little handle piece, a little end piece over here out of the way and I have now executed the joint command and it's just curious to see if I want to capture where it is right now or if that was just me moving things around. So you will see that generally I will hit the capture position and it actually puts a little feature down in the feature tree for that what can be handy later on. Now there's two rules that I want to share with you when it comes to joints. The first thing is always select the model that you want to move. So that's rule number one. So whatever model you want to move from somewhere to somewhere else, make sure you select that one first. Now the second rule about joints was probably the most profound thing that I heard and made me understand it. That was actually my friend Bryce Heventhal who, um, who told me about it. And that is when you're coming from other CAD systems, you are focused, focused on eliminating degrees of freedom. Fusion does it a little bit different. Instead of removing each degree of freedom one at a time, Fusion does it all at once. And then we are releasing the degrees of freedom as we need them. So let me move over so we can see the handle piece or part of the handle piece here. So what I want is I want to make uh, or join that piece with where kind of like where I dragged it from. So like I said, rule number one, select the piece that needs to move. Now what you will see that happens is that when I hover over it, there's like this half moon circle, Pac-Man, whatever you want to call it, that kind of appear. And that is actually um, what is going to control how things lines up. So you will see if I'm hovering around on this, that little half circle or circle with a half moon in within it, that is actually how uh, Fusion is gonna line things up. I'm gonna use it a couple of times, so there's no worries about it, you'll get a hang of it. So I'm gonna move over till it snaps to the center, and then I'm just gonna left click on that. Now when I do that, I can select where I want that to go. So I'm gonna spin the model, spin the model around, and I'm gonna select right in the same inside of the center here and click again. Now when I do that, you will see that the part moves over and it kind of like shook a little bit. That is because over here on our menu to the right, we have some different motion types. Like I talked about, Instead of removing degrees of freedom one by one, we actually tied this part down 
and now we actually gonna lose it up because what I want this thing to be able to do is actually to spin around. So I'm gonna go down to the drop down here and you will see that I get different options. In our case, well, I want a Revolute. So I'm gonna select that. And when I do that, you will see that it actually plays a little bit in the um, interface that is actually spinning around. You can also hit this little play button down here and you can see it again. Also, right underneath the Revolute, we can actually control what axis we want to use. So you will see this in a second. This is what I want this little part to do. So as that thing, little thing is spinning around on the screen there, so remember this, that you always want to select the component that you want to move to the other component. You get this little half moon shape. And like I said, we are going to see that one a few more times as we're going through this. And you're aligning those and then you're releasing that degrees of freedom. So I'm happy with this, so I'm gonna hit the OK button. And of course, I can also just drag on it here by holding down my left mouse button. We can kind of like see it is spinning around. So that have just been, been put into place. Now let's look at this movable jaw up here. So we saw before that we kind of like created as a group using that rigid group there to tie these components together, but they're still movable. Now we actually have to uh, get them into place. So I'm gonna go up again and I'm gonna do another uh, joint to do this. And again, because I move things around, I get this same pop-up and I could say continue, but I normally just do catch a position. I don't really care that I get some extra one of these down here and you can always delete them if you need them. Now, you guys who have used other CAD systems, again, where we are removing the degrees of freedom one, to time, one at a time, you would probably be using a few different mates to put this jaw into place. You probably would do one that would make it sit flat on top of the base, and then you might be using something like a width mate to get it centered, and then we would do something to be able to get it to move along the right axis. Check out how we do it in Fusion. So you might have to just, when you get to this point uh, on your example, just take a second and just think about what you actually have available. Because I have these two jaws that is gonna be right across from one another. I can hover over this jaw and you will see when I do that, I kinda like get that half moon shape again. Now if I hover down to this corner right here and I select that one, and I also go over and select the same on the solid jaw, right there. Now, zoom out a little, you will see, now you only see that it's the, this movable jaw that moved, um, but the other ones will come along with it when we hit okay. But it's fine, it makes it a little less confusing that there's only one part spinning around. Now, if I hit the animate button again, you will see that it is kind of like in the right place, but uh, I really don't want this one to be revolute. So I'm gonna hit the drop down, and instead, I wanted this one to slide. So I'm gonna hit slide, and when I do that, you will see that now I actually have that motion that I want. So I'm actually gonna go ahead here and hit okay so I can show you exactly. So what we have now is we have actually just placed that jaw. So we lined up the two points and now that jaw can slide ahead. So instead of have to select like three different mates, I was actually able to just select those two points that was gonna to be touching each other anyways on the solid jaw and the movable jaw and made everything up the way I wanted. Now I wanna show you one other trick though. Now where I have that, we will see that I got the move that I want, but of course, this is not really perfect, like <laughs> the jaw would fall off. It's extremely easy in here. If you go up, you will see in the left corner up here, we have our joints. I can actually right click on that uh, sliding joints that we just applied and I can go in and say edit joint limits. 
now I actually get some limits I can put here. So I can check minimum. And minimum for this one is where it's the two jaws are touching. So that's going to be zero. Uh, I can, of course, animate that by clicking animate. And we will see that the, the jaw kind of like now only can move up to that. Now we're also going to set a maximum. And in this case, this is a nine inch vice. I saw that on... Uh, on the website so now you will see that the joint is traveling only within that limit let me hit ok so now we have applied limits to our mate and it's now traveling just the distance that we want so I think you would agree with me that for this example at least and I have a few more that it was very easy to just use the rigid group to put everything together and then with a couple of joints command putting uh, things again so now it's working the way we want. There is one other thing I have to do though just because it's so easy inside of Fusion. Check it out. So the last thing is not important uh, but you know sometimes you just need uh, to add a little uh, bling to your model. There is actually up underneath the sample up here there is something called a motion link. So what I can do is I can do that when this jaw is moving, this uh, handle here or the nut here is, is spinning around with it. Uh, now it's not a perfect uh, relationship, but uh, you know, it just looks good. So I'm gonna turn on motion link. And again, I'm gonna capture position. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the joints that I already have created. So I'm gonna go down and select the joint down here. You can see it kind of like highlights. And then I'm gonna go over and select my other joint uh, over here, there. And just like that, you will see that it gives me a little animation again. And you know, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? So let me just hit okay to that. And let's spin it around. And somebody who's awake are gonna tell me is this the is it spinning the right way? It is it is spinning the right way. <laughs> Just gotta make sure. You could reverse it. So if I right click on the joint down here and said edit feature, I could have reversed it. But uh, that is the right way. So now whenever we are opening and closing this vice, we get that little uh, play button down here. So this was the first example. I hope that you found this helpful. Now we're gonna step it up a little bit with this late chalk we're gonna, we're gonna attack. But again, I just wanna make sure that I go over the basics. Capture the design history, make sure you ground or fix the first component, then use that rigid group to kinda like collect uh, the parts together that needs to be together and then go in and use the joints and remember that instead of removing the degrees of freedom with each uh, kind of like made instead we are trying to go the reverse way where we're selecting two points and then we can uh, in, we can loosen up the, the, the degrees of freedom from that. I hope this is helpful. Let's go on to the next example. Don't forget to jump down in the description area and download this model. Uh, so just like uh, before, the first rule is always to go over and right click and go down and click Capture Design History. So now we get that history bar down in the bottom. We definitely want to, uh, to get that. But this is the same ca case as before where the model uh, was imported and there is no mate. So anything inside of this part is just like completely, you know, can just float around. So rule number two is that we have to fix or ground one of these parts. In this case here, I think it makes sense that we maybe do the adapter plate here on the back. So I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna say ground. Now we get the thumb tag and we know that this part is kind of like set in place. So the next step is we can go in and use that rigid group again and tie everything down that we know for a fact uh, is going to be in the same place. So we don't have to sit here and mate everything in if it's just gonna sit in the same place. So I'm gonna go over here to assemble, rigid group, and I'm literally just gonna select the, the adapter plate again. I'm gonna select each of these bolts because they definitely are not going to move. 
Um, I'm also going to select the outer housing here because that's not going to move. And then there's like three screws hiding in here in <laughs> this blue space. And you can have as many of these groups, by the way, also. So you don't have to put everything into one group. You can have multiple groups. So I'm going to hit OK. So now I know that all those components are now registered down as a group here. Now, the same thing actually goes for each of these um, jaws here on the lathe jaw. So I'm going to right click and that will let me repeat the rigid group. And now I'm going to select these three, com these components here and hit OK because they are kind of like one assembly, right? That's kind of like that's that that's one assembled together. And I'm going to repeat that. So I'm going to right click, repeat rigid group. And I'm going to do that for the two other uh, sections in here. So that was one more. Right click, repeat group. And then I can go in and do that one there. So now these three are now uh, put together as, as rigid groups. So that rigid group, I think, is, is, is pretty nice to have. Now, there's still a, a couple of more components in this shock that we have to uh, to have to deal with i want to show you a little trick here i'm going to go up to the view here and i'm just going to select the back just because i want to look at it from the side um this is kind of like i'm jumping off topic a little bit here but i can't help myself in here there is some different uh selection tools and this one here if you have never used it the paint one is actually pretty cool now since i'm working inside of an assembly i actually just want to make sure that i'm not selecting any bodies uh, so just make sure that you uncheck these. If you don't uncheck these, then you will actually hide the bodies themselves and not components. So this over here, this the single uh, square over here is a component. If you have these checked, you will actually go one level down and select the bodies. But I actually just want to select the the uh, the components. I'm unchecking bodies now. So see what happens when I select the paint selection. It's like I'm taking a paintbrush and I can just multi-select everything by painting over it. And then I'm going to hit the V key on my keyboard. If you watch the video, talk about shortcuts. And you'll actually see if I got a couple of more. So I'm just going to go and paint everything and hit the V key. And that's a pretty neat way to select things with that, uh, with that painting thing. Now I got a couple of more things um, I'm going to get get rid of in here all these socket heads cap screws and I want to see those so I can just go over the tree here and they're all placed over here I select the bottom one hold down shift key select the top one while I'm holding down the shift key and I can hit the V and then that goes away I'm also gonna hide this uh, ring here hit the V key for that and that brings me into kind of like the main thing of this lathe chuck now I kind of have six components sitting in here uh, so let me just move them out. So there's these, I don't know what you call these, but then there's also these rings that are sitting here. But you know what, as I'm sitting here, these rings would actually probably have been great in rigid components. So let me just go back to put everything back in place and let me do another rigid group and select this base with these three rings because then I don't have to worry about mating those. Now it's actually just these three pieces that I need to make together. So I hope this rigid group starts to make a little bit of sense. I hope. Um, I definitely think that this is handy. Now let's go in and look at, uh, at mating in or joining, as I should say, these three um, gears. So again, my mindset would normally have been to maybe do something like a concentric and then place it somewhere. But again, Think about how these joints work, where you are first tying things together and then you're eliminating the degrees of freedom. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna select a joint. And again, I get warned about movement. I'm just gonna say capture position, that's fine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move right over on that face and select this face, because that's the component that's gonna move. And then I'm actually gonna select right down here and it's gonna move into place. Now, as soon as I do that, you can see that it actually defaults to what, let me play that again, what it did the last time was the slide. That was what we did with the movable jaw. In this case here, I'm actually wanna go back to the Revolute. So I'm just gonna change it to that. 
But that's all we have to do for that one. So we're going to repeat that two more times. So I'm going to right click to repeat the joint. And again, I'm selecting the component that is going to move. And then I'm going to select the same end condition of where it's going to go. Just like that. And it always remembers, it already remembers Revolute. So that's awesome. And let's do it one more time. Now we're going to come to a point where we are not as lucky where we have these half moon Pac-Man shapes. But we're going to deal with that in a second. And... Oops, I just placed the wrong one. Actually, it flipped on me. So let me just undo that. That was a mistake. Right click, repeat joint from there. Because you will actually, I'll try to zoom in and see if I can show you. Uh, right now, now it's facing the way I want it. See if I move it over, it kind of like switches 90 degrees. We're going to talk about that in two seconds. Place it there, and there we go. So that actually took care, took care of these. Now these are all sitting in here. They're fully made. They do exactly uh, what we want. Now the next thing I'm going to open up here is the scroll plate. That's the one that is sitting on top. So I'm going to show that one. Uh, so right now that one is actually just floating around in space too. So I'm going to go in and do another joint. So right click, repeat joint. And I'm gonna capture the position because I like it to have a little bit of part here. I wanna show you something interesting. When I now go over on this ring, and when I'm hovering over things, you will see that I get these, I'm calling them half moons, circular half moons. And you will see that they kinda of like have a tendency to jump around to where the software thinks that you wanna place them. One trick is that when you hover over and you get it somewhere close to where you want, if you hold down control or the command button on your Mac, now it actually locks it into that surface and I can now pick if I want my point to be at the top of this uh, contour. If I, if I move my mouse down while I'm holding, I'm holding control down right now uh, and I can move all the way down. So you can see how here it will stay within that. No matter where else I'm moving, it's not going to work. So I'm going to select this bottom edge here, click on that. And then I can go down and do the same thing on the ring here. And I actually want it right in the center of that one right there. And now it's sitting exactly where I want it. And I actually want it to be Revolute, so that was fancy. And just because I can't help myself, I am actually also going to go in and add motion links to this. So I'm going to add a motion link from that rotation of our scroll plate to uh, the knot here. So let me just spin around. So now those two are kind of like spinning together. Let me create another one. Repeat motion link from the center of this one to this one over here. So now they are going around and let's just add one to the last one. This is all, this is what I call modeling porn and in my world. It's definitely not needed, but it looks kind of good. All right, so we have gotten this made it in. So let's uh, let's move on here. So I'm just going to scroll up to the top, and I'm going to select the highlight up here, and right click and say Show All Components, and we are back in place again. Now the next thing is going to be a little tricky. Now the next thing we have to uh, to work with here is these jaws uh, on this part here. But they are actually a little tricky because I actually want that half moon to be placed in a certain place. So up to this point, I've been lucky. <laughs> I can just hover over and that little Pac-Man half moon circle thing appears. Uh, now I actually want to be able to control where I want to place it. Let me show you. So if we look at this jaw right here, what I want is I want to create a joint where this area is centered with this center. So what I can actually do, if I go just in and do a normal joint, and capture position, you will see that I do get a lot of options with this half moon where it is trying to appear on where I want to make. But I can't place it right between uh, the center of this part uh, where I can find a good place to, to connect the two. Well, there is a neat function in here 
and it's called joint origin. So what joint origin lets you do is it lets you create one of these half moons and it's pretty simple to do. Let me show you. If I click on that and yes, capture position, I get two options. I can either do what they call simple or I can do between two faces and that's what I want. So what I really want is I want this jaw to be uh, between this face and between this face. And then you will see that my third is snap. You will actually see as I'm starting hovering over here, it actually will appear between those two surfaces, but at different locations. Um, but sometimes this can actually be a little hard, you know, depending on if you have uh, chamfers, you know, on your edges, that can be a little difficult. But what you actually can do is if I place it right here, then you will see I get all these new options uh, appearing. And I can even go in here and I can actually stop moving that up and down. I can drag it. But what I think is better is I can actually also go up here and just select a face. So I'm just going to go up here or select an ads or a face right on here. Right like that. And now it is snapped right to that face uh, right there. So you have some different options. You also can flip them around and different things, but that's how you do that. So I'm going to hit OK to that. And we have now placed one here. Now I'm going to place one in the exact same spot uh, down on this part. So I'm going to right click to repeat the origin joint. And again, I'm going to select between two faces. And I'm going to select between here and between here. And then remember that the next one is where it's going to be. And actually, I'm pretty lucky that it's going to be right on that corner. But I could also select right on this face and it will be at the height of that face. So I'm going to select that again. Remember, you can move them up and down and scroll them around, whatever you need, if you need to to do more to them. But this is what I need here. So with that in place, place those two. I'm going to go up and select joint. And then I'm going to select that one. I'm going to select that one and then it moves over there. And now we're back to where we were before, where it animates what it's going to do. And this of course is going to be a sliding uh, motion we need from this one. And, you know, if there's a 50 50 chance, I always get the wrong one. You can see here that it's going. That's not the way we want to slide. And so then you just hit the drop down and you can select another axis. And that is actually the axis I want there. Hit OK. And then we have now placed this jaw right where that need, where they need to be. So let me do that two more times. So again, I'm going to take the component. It's going to move it out of this way. I like that. And then I'm going to go up to the drop down and here I'm going to create my own origin, joint origin. So I'm going to create that half moon joint origin right there, capture position. And I'm going to hit the drop down to select between two faces. And I'm just going to select in here on this face and on this face. And then I'm going to select where that moon is going to be between those two faces. And in my case here, it's going to be right where that face is right there. We'll select that right there. I want it hit. Okay. I'm going to go and create another one in the slot in here. So right click, repeat joint between two faces and do it right there. And it's going to be with this face up here and right on that corner. So you can actually move it around right there, that corner hit. Okay. And there that's going to be, now we can go up and do a joint from there to there. Oh, now everything is upside down. You can flip over here in the menu. That's probably nice. Let me hit the play button again. Yep. That's what I want. And hit OK. Got one more to do. Same thing. Right click. Join origin. Because I want to create my own. Between two faces. Between this face. And I want it to be flat to that face right there. Hit OK. Create one more. Basically right click. Between two joints. Between two faces. So I, what I recommend is that you play a little bit with all these settings if you're getting in here to do things like this, because, you know, that's kind of like all you really need to worry about mastering is all the different options that comes uh, within this here. So just like that, we have created 
uh, this this jaw here and uh, just because I'm gonna do this by eye but just because I can't help myself I'm just gonna place these jaws somewhat flat with the face and you probably guessed it I have to put a motion link in there and what are we gonna do a motion link between well it doesn't really matter at this point because everything is kind of like tied together it's like this one to this link and now that it's going back and forth remember you can reverse it if you want to and let me go and repeat that right click motion link from here to this one okay and right click repeat motion link and this one to this one this is just so you get the set it whoa that one so now we got a link out of here there we go by hitting the reverse button this is only so when you now get to this when you download this model that when you can get the satisfaction that things spins around so I hope that this is helpful we still got one more to go now if you feel like you got 100% control over this of course go ahead don't bother wasting your time uh, watching the last portion but again I really appreciate any feedback or comments down in the common area about how helpful this is or it's not uh, so either thumb or thumb down um, but yeah, don't forget, go down to the description area, hit the link, you can download this model so you don't have to do all this work. So in the last video here, all I really want to do is try to bring it all together. So I have a table, I want to bring in our mate advice, and then I have some clamps that we're going to place on it. So let's take a look at that. So this is just a standard table that I modeled up, uh, nothing really fancy about that. Now to bring in the device, I'm going to right click on it over here in our data panel and say insert into current design now when I do that uh, you will see that in this case here this vice and this table was not designed on kind of like around the same view uh, and many of you guys have probably already tried this yourself and then you can start moving things around over here uh, that is actually a nice feature uh, over in this move command this one point to point you can actually uh, not only just drag by using the handles on the screen, but you can actually also place things point to point. So, you know, this is great, but I'm not going to use this. I'm just going to say okay to this. Because the first thing I again want to do, rule number one, I want to right click and say capture uh, design history. Just like that. Now, when I'm going to place this vice on the table, again, if you have used other CAD systems, you have a tendency to think about uh, kind of like removing each degree of freedom as you go. So you might do uh, some kind of a coincident mate between the, the bottom down to this uh, face. Then you might do a parallel, like all these different ones. But if you think ahead a little bit, really where I want to end up is I want to end up with um, the T slots on this vice. So let me just zoom in on those. These T slots right here, they need to line up uh, with the slots on all these slots. They need to line up with the T slots, I should say, on our table. Everything else uh, is really just, uh, you know, extra work. So what I want to do is I actually want to create a joint origin uh, in that T slot on the vise and then also create one on the table. Now, if I look at the vise, you will see that there is actually a center hole here that is in line with these two slots. So that's where I want to place this uh, joint um, that I want to create myself um, and then the second one's going to be in the T slot on the table but because this is a link part this part exists outside this specific inside the table part this one is sitting outside I actually cannot uh, add that joint groove to this model because it's linked I would have to do it in the in the model itself outside this environment so I can just so I can just go ahead here and I can just open it up just from right in here. So now I'm just going to open that vice up we had before uh, right in here by itself. So now I'm going to create uh, a, the joint origin 
in that hole. There's something I want to show you a little trick about that uh, that I hope you will find you will find helpful because what's going to happen is that when I go up here and I select joint origin and I hover over the hole uh, and especially like I saw before if I hold down the control you will see that I can put it on the hole. I can even put in that edge. That's actually the edge I want there. But I actually want to rotate, rotate it 90 degrees um, in the way it is. But I can't catch that because of the way it's following the axis of the hole. That's no problem. You just need to know that if I click on and placing it, then again, we're getting all these different options here we can move it we can turn it around but over here there's a reorient and if i click on that i actually get some more options and now i can select on a perpendicular phase that um, follows that so that will be this face here and as soon as i hover over it you can see how now is where it was soon as i hover over it you see how it just flipped there you gotta look at the hole and you can see that it flips when I hover over this one here. So that is how, when I click on this face, I can now place that uh, joint so it's pointing the right way. Okay, I'm gonna redo that again because I wanna make sure that you get that. So I'm gonna cancel out, right click, and do the joint origin. So what happens is that when I hover over the hole, it places it along the hole's axis. What is actually fine now, when I click to place it, that is when I get the options to actually manipulate it more. So now I can go over and say reorient. And when I hover over a face that is perpendicular to where I actually want it to be and click on that, now it has been reoriented. Uh, so it's, it's going the right way. I hope I explained that all right. So with that done within the part, now you can see it's sitting here. I have to save the part. So I'm gonna click save up here. And you should always add a comment. That just makes it easier. And of course, it will also be now down the timeline. When I go over to the table, I will actually get flagged now up here at the top because it tells me that there's a new update to this model. So I can just click on that to bring that in. And when it brings it in, you will see that now we have that nice little joint origin right there. Perfect. Now I'm just gonna do the same thing on the table so now i'm just going to select one of these slots to uh to 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 pick so i'm going to select this slot right here so i'm going to do it again i'm going to go up and select the joint origin this time i'm going to select between two faces just like we did before and i'm going to select the two faces right there and then i can just move over and it will actually shows me where the center of that is but i actually wanted to the center of this edge up here so click that, and that is my my joint origin there. Zoom out a little bit. Now I'm just gonna select that, and that, and I actually wanted, I don't want it to slide, I actually want it as being rigid. And then here there's actually a brand new feature inside of Fusion where I can grab and I can actually manipulate after I place this, I'm gonna bring it up to 90, hit okay. And now this vise is sitting on the middle of the table, right where I want it. So now you don't have to fight around with trying to figure out exactly where those T slots is. So that got a little bit technical, uh, but just know that you have some, or some options to reorient those joint origins. Now let's put some clamps in there. So let's do that. So I'm actually gonna go out here and I have a whole clamping set. I'm gonna right click on that and insert that into the current design uh, also. And of course that is coming in and I'm just gonna spin it around here so we can see it. There it is. All right. Now I wanna be able to do just what you're gonna do out in the shop floor and take these different parts out of this uh, and, and use it um, but i actually want it to be part of this file and not reside outside here's a neat trick 
You see how it has the linkage. We just played with that with the vice. The vice is actually another file. But you can right click and you can actually break the link. So now this becomes part of this model. So now I just have this table sitting right here. And now I can insert uh, my different clamps, whatever I need. So let me do that. So I'm going to go over and grab one of these uh, T slots here. And then we're going to place that uh, inside of here. And we really got to follow the same steps we already have. So if you feel pretty good right now about the whole thing, you can always just uh, end the video, uh, put your comment and, uh, and move on with your life. But if you want to hang around, let's uh, add a couple of more um, joints to this one here. So in this case, I'm going to select another uh, joint origin here. So I'm just going to hit joint origin, capture the position. And uh, I am going to, again, select between two faces. So this one's going to be between this face and this face. And uh, it actually is going to rest right on that face right there. So I can place that there. That was one. Let's go over to our table and uh, let's create one over here. Right click, repeat joint between two faces, this face and this face. And again, this one here, it's going to be to that bottom face right down there, right? Like that one, just like that. And now we can go ahead and do a joint between this one and this one. It's going to fly over there. Uh, now we can see that it's actually in the wrong uh, direction, but we can just grab this handle and we can actually move it. Um, 180 that would be. And I actually want this to slide, right? But not that way. So I'm going to go down and select the other axis. That's the way I want it to slide. Hit OK. And now this one is, uh, is placed right here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get a bolt for it. Bring this one out here. And this is where it really is nice with this joint command. Because check this out. Select the joint. I'm going to select the bottom of the screw here right there I'm gonna go up to our little T knot and I'm gonna select right there and it will slide um, but in this case here we could actually just say say rigid would be fine so now the bottom and the top is set in there now the whole thing can still slide uh, along uh, that that T knots so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually place it so I'm going to do a joint and I'm just going to select on, I don't really care where I'm selecting on the, the bolt itself, um, but I'm just going to select one there and then I'm actually going to go over to our part itself and select right that edge right there, move it over there. Now I know that rigid might not work, I actually get a warning here because I had selected like the center of this one, but if I let it slide or cylindrical if I let it slide up and down here it actually will get that freedom to move and then it, it would accept so the last thing we need on this one is a knot on the end and uh, I'm gonna go again we're removing the degrees of freedom so I'm gonna go over here select the joint capture position and I'm gonna select right at the bottom there and move over to our bolt here and I'm again going to select right on this face right on that zoom in a little right on that face right there and that is actually where I want the bolt I'm going to flip it and I'm just going to make it rigid because it should sit right there and just like that we have placed uh, that part here now let's do uh, let's do one more here now you will actually see that the joint grooves actually carries on so I created one on the T-slot before and here it is again but you will actually see that it's kind of like not over here anymore where I thought it was well it is we just need to go into the joint origin folder over to the left and we can go ahead here and we can turn uh, on the that's the second one we can turn on that one right there now we can see it so now everything is a little faster 
select that one to there let it come over there i'm going to rotate it 90 degrees 180 that is going to be a sliding option and the wrong axis and that axis there right so now we got that one we need to bring another fold over right there hope you don't get too seasick with me flying around here with the mouse to that point there just like that that is going to be rigid just like I did before and now right click repeat joint again you will see I'm selecting just in the cylinder here and it just picks it up on the center but because I'm going to use a, a slider on it it doesn't really matter too much go over here so like that and I'm just gonna let it slide that direction and the last thing we need is the knots right there the joint From that face to just selecting right on that edge right there so it gets over there flip it and make it rigid there you have it folks that should be how you can use these joints they're all showing up right now of course you can you can hide the joint folders uh, over here but that's it there uh, we went through the three different examples so remember the rules First off, you always need to turn on Capture the Design History. Right click on the top component, turn that on. Number two, we need to fix or ground one of the components into space. Then after that, we want to use the rigid group to kind of like capture the things that is kind of already in the right place and that don't need to be moved or group them at least together. Next, when you get into the joint, Make sure that you select the first component that X is going to move. So the component that needs to move somewhere is the first one you select. And then don't forget that that joint origin has a lot of great options on how you, uh, how you can move things around. So I hope that you found this was helpful. Don't forget, grab your models down in the description area. I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, watch these videos. I love your feedback. If you like this video, hit it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, hit the thumbs down. And if you haven't already, it will mean the world to me if you will hit that subscribe button. So until the next time, have an awesome day.